This protein video will discuss a brief history of selenocysteine and the importance of its existence in selenoproteins. Selenium is the 34th element on the periodic table located just beneath sulfur and oxygen. In biological systems, selenium is most commonly seen in proteins which act as reducing agents, examples of which will be discussed throughout the video. This incorporation of selenium is possible due to the existence of a 21st amino acid known as selenocysteine. This amino acid has the same structure as cysteine, but the sulfur component is replaced by a molecule of selenium. The woman credited with this discovery is Dr. Thressa Statman of the National Institutes of Health. In 1972, she was researching the biochemical properties of glycine reductase, the enzyme which reduces glycine to acetate. She isolated and purified each individual protein component of the enzyme by ion exchange chromatography, then used this information to grow the bacteria Clostridium stricklandi under conditions which should propagate the production of glycine reductase. Each time the bacteria could not reduce glycine to acetate, she associated it with the absence of an unknown protein A, denoted by a subscript A in the diagram. She conducted several experiments with the bacteria in order to determine which inorganic substance was necessary to produce more protein A and therefore regain activity of the enzyme. She found the inorganic mineral necessary to be selenium. Her technician, Joe Nathan Davis, then conducted a separate experiment growing the bacteria with a radio-labeled tag for selenium in order to track its use and configuration in protein A. From the results of this experiment, Dr. Satman was then able to propose that the selenium was incorporated into protein A in the form of a cysteine analog, which contained selenium instead of sulfur. The next major discovery that Dr. Statman and her team made was that of the synthesis of selenoproteins. In order to determine the primary structure of the proteins, several geneticists were invited to the lab to sequence the genome of the bacteria and purify what was now known to be the selenoprotein. Through painstaking Edmund degradation, they matched all the amino terminals to each other and compared these sequences to other newly discovered selenoproteins with collaborating biochemists around the world. They realized that selenocysteine has its own unique tRNA codon, which is normally recognized as one of the stop codons, UGA. In later experiments, it was determined that the insertion of selenocysteine instead of stopping translation of the protein is recognized by the fact that a loop structure exists on the three prime downstream untranslated region of the mRNA. This additional structure was named cecus, or selenocysteine insertion element. Once this common element of the primary structure of selenoproteins had been determined, other selenium biochemists began experiments to determine the folding of the protein and its tertiary structures. Similar to how cysteine can make stabilizing disulfide bonds during protein folding, selenocysteine can likewise make diselenide bonds. A cysteine and a selenocysteine can form stabilizing selenium sulfide bonds as well. The most stable of these bonds in holding the structure of the protein together was determined to be the disulfide bond. The instability of the diselenide bond, however, makes it a better nucleophile and reducing agent than sulfur. In determining the native state of a protein containing both cysteine and selenocysteine, diselenide bonds will form first in a slightly acidic environment, while disulfide bonds will form first in a slightly basic environment. The selenium sulfide bonds will primarily form in the presence of a strong oxidizing agent. Selenoprotein W, pictured here, was one of the first selenoprotein structures discovered. It is one of the simpler structures of its family of selenoproteins. Its major components are two right-handed alpha helices and four beta strands. The beta strands are arranged so that three are parallel to each other, while a fourth lies in the middle and anti-parallel to the two between it. Many different selenoproteins share this similar basic structure, though selenoprotein R only contains beta sheets in the form of a beta barrel centered around a molecule of zinc. There are also larger families of selenoproteins, which are classified as thioredoxin reductases and glutathione peroxidases. Other selenium-containing reducing agents are also included in the largest family. These proteins are more complex and may contain several different subunits. Similar components of smaller selenoprotein structures can be seen in each subunit. Though many of the functions of selenoproteins still remain unknown, the most well-understood parts are involved in reduction reactions and metabolism. Thioredoxin reductase, abbreviated TRXR, is an important regulatory enzyme in photosynthesis and fatty acid biosynthesis, reducing NADPH to NADP+. Selenium also works as a cofactor with glutathionine peroxidase in the management of peroxides and free radicals in the blood. They are able to turn peroxides into much less harmful water molecules. One of the first proven medical links between selenoproteins and disease is a nutritional muscle degeneration found in newborn lambs, calves, and foals, known commonly as white muscle disease. This is due to the streaks of white and muscle tissue produced from abnormal calcium deposits. Currently, many researchers are working on experiments to determine if there is a relationship between selenoproteins and the growth of cancer cells or the risk of diabetes. My personal interest in selenoproteins comes from having raised sheep for over 10 years. Sheep and goats are among the most susceptible species to white muscle disease, which is directly linked with a selenium-deficient diet. 
Of the seven lambs we had born one of our first years, three of them showed signs of muscle pain and weakness, standing with hunched backs and heads drooping, while one lamb had a severe enough case that she could barely stand up on her own. The first thing our vet suggested was to give them each an injection of selenium and vitamin E supplement. Within a matter of days, they had all shown vast improvement as the selenium had been able to reactivate the enzymes necessary for proper metabolism to replenish their muscle tissues. Since that year, we have fed a special mineral mix to pregnant ewes in order to ensure that all their lambs will have the essential vitamins and minerals to develop their muscles properly. We have not seen a muscle-related problem since then.